Today, we're gonna to play around with binary data, binary files, and specifically, we're gonna look at how we can tell if a file is a JPEG or not. Welcome back everybody to another programming video. Today we're gonna to look at binary data, binary files. This is something that often gives new programmers and sometimes not so new programmers some trouble, especially if you're used to working with text all the time. And we're gonna look at it in the context of a very specific task, which is checking to see if a file is a JPEG image or not. We are gonna be working mostly in C. It'll be about the same as it would be in C++, but we're also going to look at the end at some of the issues that can come up when you're trying to do this in a higher level language like Python or Ruby. As with all my videos with source code, source code is available through Patreon. These videos are of course free to everyone and that's how I want it, but if you're finding this content valuable, please do consider trying to find a way to support the channel. Drop a video a like, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon, or buy merch, or maybe just tell all your friends about this channel that's helping you take your skills and understanding to the next level. Whatever you decide to do, whatever works best for you, thank you for being here. But now, but now, let's jump into the code. Okay, so to start off, we do have a few files here that I just wanna take you through. First off is a make file. Uh, this is just about like any of the make files that you've seen in my other videos. I'm gonna use this to compile our example. If you've never seen make before, please do check out my make videos. Down here at the bottom, we do have a thumbnail image. It's just an image from a recent video. We're gonna use this just to test our program once we're done. And then we also have this JPEG tester RB file, which is our Ruby version of the program. We'll look at that at the end of the video. And then we have our JPG tester.c file. This is where we're gonna spend most of our time. But before we get into writing code, I want to take a look at our JPEG file and see if we can understand a little more about the task at hand. Because initially when we think about how do we detect if it's a JPEG or not, why not just look at the file name, look at the file extension, and if it ends in .jpg, then it's a JPEG, right? And the answer is, well, yes and no. I mean, you could do that, but to see some of the nuance here, let's uh, let's first just take our JPEG and let's make a copy of it. Okay, so let's say I copy my thumb.jpg and let's give it a different extension. So something like, you know, thumb.other, some extension that doesn't help us understand at all that the guts of this file is a JPEG image. Okay, now if I come in here and I click on it, well now VS Code is definitely confused, right? VS Code doesn't understand really what we're looking at, but if I do come down here and I try to open thumb.other and I tell it to use preview, well then you can see that preview was actually able to tell that this is a JPEG image, even though the extension is .other. Okay, so it's somehow looking at the contents and detecting that it's a JPEG regardless of what the file name is. And that's what we're gonna look at today. That's what we're gonna try to do. Okay, so to get an idea of what this looks like, let's actually look at the guts of this file. If we just click on the image, then you're gonna just see the image. That's not very helpful. If I come in here and tell VS Code to open it in my text editor, I'm gonna get a lot of unprintable garbage. This isn't helpful at all. I mean, I can see there is some readable text in here, but there's a whole lot of stuff that's just not helpful. So what we really want to do here, because this is a binary file, it's not a text file, is we want to come in here and do open with, and we will use the hex editor. Okay, so I've talked about hex editors in previous videos. A hex editor is just a simple tool that helps us look at the binary bytes that are contained in a file. We can look at text files in a hex editor, but they're particularly useful when we're looking at binary files. They contain a lot of information that is not printable. So our JPEG is a perfect example of this. A lot of the information in a JPEG file is just not human readable. We look at it and we don't really know what's going on. But for our purposes today, there are a few important bytes. So these three bytes right here at the beginning, this FF, D8, and FF, this for our purposes today is where all the magic happens. And interestingly, these are actually called the JPEG magic number, right? These are three bytes that every JPEG sticks at the beginning of the file, FF, D8, FF as a way to quickly recognize whether this is a JPEG formatted data or not. So if you don't see FFD8FF at the beginning, you're not dealing with a JPEG image. Also, while we're here, if you do keep looking past, you do see that there's this EXIF data, and uh, this, this has information, a lot of metadata about the image. It can, in fact, have thumbnails for the image. It can also tell you what uh, tool I use to generate this image file. 
So you can see I used Photoshop to create it. Do let me know if you would be interested in looking more deeply at how this metadata is structured in a future video. But today, like I said, today we're going to focus on these three bytes and using those top three bytes to detect whether we are dealing with a JPEG image or not. Okay, so now let's jump back into C. As usual, we're starting with an empty program that definitely needs us to add some guts to it. The first thing I want to do is to make sure it's being called correctly. So we are going to test. We're going to check to see if argc, and if it's not equal to two, then I'm going to come in here and print out a usage string, something like usage. Let's print out the name of the binary. That's going to be the first element of argv. And then we're going to pass in a file name. Now this file name that we pass in, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be the file that we want to test. Okay, so whatever we pass into the program, we're going to run the program with one argument and that is the file name that we want to test to see whether it's a JPEG or not. And then I'm just going to print out yes if it's a JPEG, no if it's not a JPEG. Of course, you could do whatever you need to do for your particular example, but this will work for our purposes today. And then because at this point we don't want to proceed, let's just return exit failure. Okay, so because we didn't succeed and this will let whoever ran this program know that something isn't right. Okay, so now once we get past this check, so if, if we get this far where my cursor is right now, then you know that we have an argument to work with. So now let's make a character pointer called file name and I'm just giving it a name. I could use argv1 everywhere, but I find this is more human readable. I want my code to be a little easier to understand. So let's just assign a pointer to this value and that way we can use file name. And then if we ever did later on want to change which argument we use for the file name, it would just have to change this one line rather than changing it anywhere where I use that later on in the program. So now after this, we can go straight into creating a new file pointer called FP. And we're going to call f open and pass in the file name and we are going to open it in read mode and i'm going to add a b for binary all of the operating systems that i'm working on today ignore this flag they treat everything the same text or binary but there are operating systems out there that treat them differently just super annoying so anyway we'll put this in just in case to try to improve the portability of this code and then just for sanity's sake let's check to make sure that this didn't fail so if fp is null, meaning f open had some kind of error. It didn't give us what we wanted, didn't open the file. Then let's call p error and we'll say f open. So this is going to basically give us the cause, the reason. It's going to print out the, the system error message that caused the failure of f open. And then I'm going to print out my own just in case that's not super helpful. I'm going to say sorry, could not open file. And then percent %s, we'll print out the file name right there. And then again, let's return exit failure because you passed in a file that could not be tested because it didn't exist or we didn't have access to it or something like that. Okay, so now we have our file open. If we get to this point, we know we have an open file. Now it's time to actually read those bytes and try to do something with them. So before we get too far into it though, I want to make a couple of variables. Let's make a const int that's gonna be the magic num bytes. And I'm going to set that equal to three because that's three bytes we're looking at. Of course, we could hard code it, but you know me, I like to avoid magic numbers whenever I can. So then let's come in here and make two arrays. So we're going to make one called magic number. It's going to be an array of magic num bytes. And let's just initialize that to all zeros. And then let's make another one here. And I'm going to call this expected magic number. And this one we're going to say is FF d8 ff. Now also I forgot to mention earlier that all of these numbers are shown in hexadecimal. If you're brand new and you're like, I've never seen hex, this looks weird. Why are you saying this is a number that has letters in it? Do please check out my video about hexadecimal and why it's important. Um, that might make this whole thing make a little more sense. But okay, so this is going to be where we are going to read in the bytes from the file. And this is what we expect. So this, these are the bytes that we actually expect to see there. So now let's go ahead and read them in. Now for this, I want to call fread, okay? You don't want to use fscanf or getline or any function that is going to assume that what you're reading is text, okay? fread doesn't care, it just reads bytes. And so that's the one that we want to use because you don't know what you're going to get. I mean, any file could have any number of bytes in there. And so you definitely don't want to use something like fscanf. But so what we're going to do is we're going to say, we want to read in to our magic number. So we pass in the pointer to where we want the data to go. We're reading chunks 
chunks of one byte and let's do magic num bytes. Now we could swap that order and say, I wanna have one block of three bytes. It's not really gonna matter in this case. And we're gonna read it from FP. Okay, now one other thing is this is going to return the number of bytes read, okay? So, so we gotta get that. And we wanna, we really only wanna consider this if we were able to get a full three bytes. So here we'll say if num red is not equal to magic num bytes. Okay, so something went wrong, we weren't able to get it. Then in this case, we're going to say, couldn't read the first three bytes. And so, okay, so we'll do that. And also once again, return exit failure. Okay, so now if we get to this point, we were able to get three bytes. So now really simply all we're gonna do is call mem compare. Okay, so mem compare, we're gonna compare magic number and expected magic number and the number of bytes we're going to check is magic num bytes. Okay, so this is the function we're going to call and this is going to return a zero if these two things are identical. And so let's just say if mem compare, yeah. So if this call, if this equals zero, then just print out yes. And if it's not, then we're going to print out no. Okay, you could of course print out whatever you want, but this will be simple enough. We'll just run it and it's either gonna say, yes, it's a JPEG, no, it's not a JPEG. Okay, so now at this point, if I did this correctly, this should work, I think so. Let's just test it out. Let's jump back into the virtual machine and let's run make. Okay, we got a clock skew, that's fine. So it's compiling in Linux, just fine. Let's come through, that clock skew is annoying me, so let's just make clean and compile it for my Mac. It should work in both cases either way. Okay, so now we can come in here and say JPEG tester, and let's say thumb.jpg, and it says yes, thumb.other, yes, and then what if I say something like does not exist, then you notice it, it catches that saying I, I couldn't open that thing. And then if we come in here and do something like JPEG tester.c, then it's gonna say no, like I could open it, but that's not a JPEG. Okay, so this is great. Our program works. It doesn't just check the file name. In fact, it doesn't care about the file name at all. It looks at the contents and tells us if it's a JPEG or not. And of course, you could do this in any language you wanted to, but in some languages, there are some little details that can be super annoying. And I wanted to show you that in a different example. Well, I mean, the same example, but in Ruby. And, and this these issues will come up in Python and, and other high-level languages. Ruby just happens to be the one that I chose to work with today. This program, so here's the equivalent of main. I mean, there's there's not a main function in Ruby, but that's fine. So in this Ruby program, basically you are going to do the same thing that we normally see. It's a little simpler. So that's one thing you notice typically with high level languages is if you go from C to a higher level language like Python or Ruby, typically your program is gonna be shorter. And that's actually one of the things that people gripe about C. You know, they get frustrated that, that C doesn't do as much for you, so you end up writing more code. That's a common complaint. And we definitely see this here. This is going to be a shorter program. But so once again, we check the arguments, then we grab the file name from our first argument. And then we're gonna call this is JPEG and either say yes or no. And then in that is JPEG function up here. And this, by the way, if you haven't seen this, uh, let me know, I, I could do a video on, on what this is, but this just allows me to run it without typing Ruby on the command line. It tells it what interpreter we wanna use with this file. So anyway, that's, that's fine. But then this is JPEG function, all it's gonna do is just like before, it's gonna open the file, it's gonna read three bytes, and it's gonna close the file. And then we're gonna check to see if those bytes are equal to the bytes we expected. Now note that I'm not doing a lot of the error checking that I did in C, that's fine. So it wouldn't be quite this short if I did exactly the same thing, but that's not the point. That's not why I really wanted to show this to you. Why I wanna show this to you is that this, many people would write this and say, oh, I, this should work, right? So if we come in here and we say jpg tester.rb and then say something like, uh, well, let's first test, test it on a file that is not a JPEG. Oh, I mistyped it. There's an E in this one. Okay, so it says no, so that seemed to work. Uh, but now if I come down here and say thumb.jpg, well, it says no too. In fact, it doesn't matter what I pass into this, it's always going to say no. And we go, well, why? That's that's weird. And I've seen these issues give student programmers a ton of headaches, drive people absolutely crazy, because they're like, this should work. So let's take a closer look. So if I come down here and let's just get into our Ruby interpreter and let's just run some of this code. So let's just say file.open and say thumb.jpg 
Okay, so that worked. We were able to open it just fine. And then let's say that I do something like, well, I'll just I'll short, keep myself less typing. So we'll say f dot read three. Okay, so we were able to read it, right? Which that looks right, ff d8 ff, right? So that seems simple enough. But now if we say, does b equal ff d8 ff, it says false. This is our problem, right? So. I mean, it looks identical here and it looks identical here. And so this is definitely something that's going to drive people just a little bit crazy until they understand what's going on. And then it kind of makes sense. You're still going to be a little annoyed when you discover what's going on. But really what the issue is, is this is an issue about encodings. It's about text encodings. I've mentioned that a little bit in a previous video, and I know I owe you a video on Unicode and UTF-8. So we're, we're going to get to that. It's on my list. I just haven't gotten it put together yet. But if we take B and say, what is its encoding? Coding, you can see it's encoded as an ASCII 8-bit string. Now, what if I do the same thing with the string FF D8, work with that as well, but FF and do this, this is encoded as UTF-8. So the bytes are the same, but the encodings are different. And so when I compare the strings, it says, sorry, different encodings, different strings. So this is something you have to keep in mind if you're going to be reading in binary data when working in a high level language like Ruby or Python is you've got encoding issues. And so for two things to match, their encoding needs to be the same. Now, this is one place where I think C actually shines. If I'm doing simple processing of binary data, binary files, I often find working in C and C++ to be a bit easier because strings are strings, bytes are bytes, right? It's, it's very straightforward. They're not doing any automatic character encoding nonsense for you or to you, whichever you, however you want to think of it. So for simple binary processing tasks, I sometimes prefer C for that very reason. But it's not the end of the world. As long as we're aware of it, we can make this work. All we're going to have to do here is do something like we can, we can basically just, if we know that everything is getting put into UTF-8. We could, for example, do something like, say, bytes.force encoding and do UTF-8. So that should do the trick. So let's just see. Now, if I come in here and run it, now it works. Now it detects that those two strings are the same because I forced the encoding to be the same. Maybe there's some Ruby enthusiasts out there that have a better, cleaner way of doing that. This just is one way that Hopefully you can see clearly what's going on. But if you are going to work with binary data in a higher level language that is doing automatic encoding stuff, you got to keep this in mind because otherwise you can get some really weird results that may be a little tricky to understand. But it didn't make my code terrible. It's not like it destroyed anything. It just added this one line. And this is just something that we would have to keep in mind anytime we're doing something like this. OK, so that's where I'm going to stop for today. I hope this was useful. I hope you learned something new, gave you a little different perspective on reading binary data. Maybe you haven't had that experience. A lot of times your classes start with text-based stuff, and it may be a little while before you see something like this. So now when you do, hopefully it's not too scary. So thanks for being here. Be sure to click something on your way out. Tell a friend how much you love this channel, and until next week, I'll see you later.